There have been a lot of discussions and workshops about people who deal with addictions. Can you talk about the notion of releasing or getting past addictions in context with the grid? Well, addiction could be used in a positive sense. It usually isn't. Right. And addiction is momentum. Let's talk about it in relationship to the grid. So let's say that you've been fussing about things, you've been uncomfortable, maybe even complaining to people, and you've been doing it for long enough that you've got a pretty active vibration going on about that. So formerly we called that your point of attraction. Now we're calling it your grid. Are you following the idea of the grid? It's like the framework of a building that will fill in with more specific details. But it's the basis, it's the root that is, it's sort of like the average of the thoughts that you've been thinking and what they represent vibrationally. So let's say you've been fussing and worrying and arguing and complaining and that's a grid that you've got going on. And because that's the grid that you've established, it's filling in. It's filling in with more annoying people. Next logical step. It's filling in with more things going wrong. Next logical step. It's filling in because law of attraction is bringing to you what your point of attraction equals. You follow? Mm -hmm. Now, we really like this word that we're going to now apply to the grid. Momentum. Law of attraction causes a momentum to flow into the grid. And that momentum is what addiction is. It's the manifested behavior that matches the momentum. That's why we say there are positive addictions because sure. there certainly are positive momentums mm -hmm. and there are what you would call negative addictions. So all we're talking about is somebody without knowing what they were doing established a point of attraction, a grid, a habit of thought. They beat the drum of things that they do not want and did it long enough that now there's momentum going and so... So then the addiction, but the addiction is also, if you talk about chemical addictions, if you talk about people that are using drugs, that they're using that as a way to kind of diffuse their attention or their focus because maybe something is too painful to maybe, deal with. Maybe, maybe. That's one way of looking at it. And we are not saying that that is not the case, mm -hmm. but give us more when you say chemical addiction. What do you mean, chemical addiction? <clears throat> Why'd you use that word? Um, I drink a lot of coffee. And if I don't, I don't feel the energy that I like and I get the caffeine free headaches and all the different things. So it makes me, so the, so the withdrawal from that makes me go back and drink more and I really like it. Now it, I'm kind of happy I'm not shooting heroin into my arm, but really is, there's not that much of a difference in terms of the vibration of it. At least it would strike me as such. We agree. So are you saying that the cells of your body are cooperative components and part of the momentum and therefore part of the manifestation. So at what point would you maybe consider something that seems like an easy mild in comparison to heroin um, craving or addiction or momentum or movement or habit or behavior? At what point would you maybe want to put a negative enough label on it that there would be a corresponding bounce. In other words, so you said, I'd like clarity and I think I'm getting it here. And when I stop drinking it, I feel a headache. So is there anything in your exposure to this manifestation that is causing a clarification? In other words, we can see how someone is moving along, feeling a little fuzzy in the mind, never has had any coffee. Someone says to them, you might try this. At first, it sort of sets you into a buzz. You sort of like it, but mostly don't because it's a little disorienting. But then your body, as it always does, acclimates to it. And so now you've got a sort of rhythm going and you begin to say, mm, I like this. I like the social aspects of it. I like the flavor aspects of it. I like the clarity aspect of it. I think I'm really sort of liking this. So you participate with it more until the momentum gets stronger and stronger. And then you find yourself participating in it, this is just an analogy or an example, maybe in more than what you want to the point where you actually feel a little driven. You feel like you need to go do that. You can't just get on with your day in the way that you might. You're going to make your Starbucks stop or whatever it is. Right. And, and you find that if you don't, then you begin to feel a little withdrawal because your body has become accustomed to something. And can you foresee, and we are not trying to put thoughts into your mind, can you foresee that you could have an experience with something that 
that started out seeming to feel something that you want and then have enough life experience that you bounce into a more exaggerated or refined or defined or specific intention. It's that, a perfect description of it, absolutely. And then that desire might say, I like the clarity and I like feeling good in my body and I like my body responding to my desire and I like well-being. So now we're saying to you, if you specifically say, I'm going to stop participating in this beverage that I've been participating in, it's not likely that that's going to be easy because right. the vibrational momentum, the grid is filling in, the craving is still there. Now you could use your willpower, but we don't recommend using willpower because willpower is trying to buck a current of a grid filling in. Right. You've heard this analogy, it's our favorite relative to this subject. I've fallen out of an airplane. I jumped out of an airplane. I'm at 50,000 feet. I have no parachute. What should I do? And we say, hang on, it'll be over soon. <laughs> because given your expectations and your experience in this time-space reality, there's a pretty sure thing of what's going to happen next. But what's going to happen after that is really what's in question. So what we're saying here is don't try to change course in the middle of momentum, in the middle of law of attractions response to your grid. Don't try to buck that current. It will just make you tired. Instead, at a time of non-resistance, prepave a different grid and do it often enough that you get some momentum going there so that that grid is calling you more powerfully than the former grid. Sure. Because when you allow it in that, in that way, then the cooperative components of the universe assist you. Right. And the cooperative components of the universe include the cells of your body. They include your vibrational basis. They include everything that has anything to do with you in your current powerful now moment in a recent workshop you had said there were there was there's really no such thing as a quantum leap croaking is as close as you're going to get to a quantum leap and and given the discussion we just had why is that obvious well be, why is it obvious that there are no quantum leaps no. Um, because you're trying to buck a current yeah because law of attraction is going to bring you something pretty close to where you are. Right. And as that grid fills in, then there you are. So then if, if there are no such thing as quantum leaps, then... We didn't say there are no such thing, but we are say, okay. we're saying to you, they are very rare. In other words, to really, really know what you don't want. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're going to say something even more definitive. First time, important. Vibrational quantum leaps happen all the time. Okay. That's what the bounce is in knowing what you don't want, knowing what you do want. Okay. But in this time-space reality, where the actualization meshes with the physical laws of your time-space reality, mm -hmm. you have to prepare that basis to allow that actualization. So then, how does Abraham define things that people would see as the... Happy quantum leaps. Somebody wins the lottery. Someone recovers from an illness they thought they were going to croak from. Somebody wakes up out of a coma after 10 years. That they weren't as far away from that vibration as they thought they were. That the actualization that occurred was the vibrational frequency that was dominant, no exceptions. Right, but how, let's use the lottery example, how is a huge pile of money to someone that has almost none? How is that a next logical step? Well, here's a better way of looking at this. Track them for a year or two or three and see how that pile of money does for them and you'll understand your question. Right. In other words, if they were really ready for it, they thrived in the receiving of it. They parlayed it into more. They've set up a legacy that is enhancing their abundance forevermore. If they weren't ready, it went through them quickly. In other words, it went through their experience fast and was disruptive in the process. So is that manifestation... Are you, are you suggesting that the winning of the lottery well, you are, of course, that the winning of the lottery is something that is so wanted. You see, everything that you want, there is a reason that you want it. And the reason that you want it is that you feel that you will feel better in the having of it. Right. So we want you not to equate that winning the lottery with 
someone experiencing all their dreams coming true. Because while they may have been experiencing lack of abundance and they certainly may want abundance, it's far from an alignment that has taken place. So I don't know if there's such a thing as a vibrational fluke, but is that what happens? No, never. There's never a vibrational fluke. Never. That's the nice thing about teaching law of attraction. Mm -hmm. We only have one answer and it's always right. <laughs> because the law of attraction is so consistent. Nothing ever goes wrong, ever. Nothing ever is off from the vibration. But, oh, it is so much more satisfying to be in control of the vibration that you are uttering so that you are recognizing the filling in of the grid and feeling the deliciousness of Mm -hmm. recognizing your part, your important, precise part in all of it. I know you've mentioned before uh, how when you focus for 17 seconds that law of attraction responds. Where did that 17 seconds, like what, why 17, not 16, or I, just out of curiosity? It well, there was a time when it was more like... Um, 47 is getting faster and faster as more and more focus. Here's a good way to say this. As the energy moves faster, the power of it is more. And the more powerful the momentum, the less the belief matters. In other words, it's sort of like, in a sort of awkward way, the faster the train's going, the less significant the rock wall is to it. Because if it's going fast enough, it will just blow right through the rock wall. So if you have powerful, powerful desire and your belief is not quite in sync with it, the desire has more momentum. So when you're focused in the direction of your desire, wonderful things happen. But if you get crossways of them, then you have a, a sort of rough experience. You see what we're getting at? So the ideal situation is to not get too much spread between what you're asking for, what you want, and what you're believing. That really is the most comfortable ride. Deliberately bringing yourself into alignment with your desires. So now ask your question again. We laid sure. such a basis that the specifics of it got lost in the process. Sure. I guess it's, it is where, how to get to be 17 seconds. Why is it 17 versus... 16 or 18 or 20 or it's becoming shorter and shorter and shorter as the energy of the planet is moving faster and faster and faster and more and more consciousness is coming into alignment with the desire so it's essentially an indicator of how quickly energy is moving yeah. of consciousness right now. and he here's a question we'd like to throw out to you just for fun will there ever be a point that there will be no time between the idea and the manifestation or the filling in of the grid. And if there were to be such a time, yes there will, if there were to be such a time, <laughs> if there were to be such a time, will everyone find it at the same time? No. But if there were to be such a time, what would be the result of that? Instant manifestation. Well, when you got instant manifestation going on, you want to be focused upon what you want. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. So, bless that 17 seconds. Absolutely. I'm a big fan. Thank you, Abraham.